Lord, we just come before you today and we give you thanks and praise and honor and glory for everything that you were doing in our lives. We thank you for the precious blood of your son, Jesus, for what he has done and he came and delivered us out of the kingdom of darkness and into your kingdom, God. I yes, thank you that thank you, you are realigning us and you are bringing us into the ancient past of who you are and what your kingdom is. And we yes. thank you for that, God. God, it is such an honor for you to have chosen us to come out. And yes. we just want to thank you that we, we are here to listen to you. Thank you, Lord. To your word thank and you, your spirit. Thank you, Lord. And now, God, we just pray your blessing upon this time. Open up our ears, open up our eyes, cause us to see, hear, and understand. Give us wisdom, give us insight, help us to see things that we didn't see before we arrived here, and help us to hear things that we maybe haven't heard before also. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. We thank you for the word of God that will go forth. We thank you for the anointing that is on Allison. We thank you that the anointing breaks every yoke, plan, and scheme of the enemy, of our flesh, and of our minds. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks and praise and honor, and we give you glory, God. Praise you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just spend a few seconds. We're going to... You guys done? <laughs> we're just going to spend just a few seconds here praying in the Spirit. Okay? So let's all pray in the Spirit. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for the gift of praying in tongues. Thank you, Lord. Oh, what a great gift it is. Amen. Thank you, everybody. It, what a great gift. I think we should never take for granted uh, our prayer language. What a great gift we have. The, the Father has been so good to give that to us for so many reasons, and we're going to be talking about those reasons tonight. We've been, uh, Mike would not approve because I don't have much of a review tonight. <laughs> so Mike, is he watching? Is he watching? No. Oh, okay, so tell him I'm really sorry. Um, this is our YouTube channel, Sh Shiloh 44, and for those of you that work and want to work in the gifts of the Spirit, um, I would encourage you to look at all of my videos. All the rest of the videos are pretty good, too. <laughs> but if you're interested in the things of the Spirit, just watch all my videos. I have four missing videos, and I will be replacing them in a different format, obviously, but I will be replacing those so you get every single lesson, because I was building a foundation. It talks about The first part of it talks about the Holy Spirit and our relationship to Him, and who He is, and His character, and how He is symbolized in the Bible, and what that means. And then we start moving in the baptisms, the different baptisms and the baptisms of the Holy Spirit, especially. And um, then we are starting, then we began talking about the gifts of the Spirit. I began with the revelation gifts, which are what? Revelation gifts. Word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Discerning of spirits, and we went at nausea, and there's like six videos on discerning of spirits, because we have people that are real big seers. God has released that gift into the body, and um, especially for this time, because we are fighting a spiritual battle we have to see in the spirit. And it is a natural thing for spiritual creatures to see in the spiritual realm. And we are spiritual beings first, pre preeminently and predominantly. And the spirit realm is the eternal realm, not the temporal realm. This realm will disappear, but the other realm will live forever and ever eternal. So we've got to change our perspective of how we see the spirit realm. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's go. We're going to review a little bit. There are nine gifts of the spirit, right? And we talked about the revelation gifts. And then we, ta then we started talking about, we talked about visions an inward vision, an open vision, a trance, a night vision. We talked about all of those just last week. 
So um, there, it's up on YouTube. And uh, we need to start experiencing these things. God wants to communicate through us, and our days are very busy, right? But when we're in his prayer, when we're in our prayer time, we're communing with him, he wants to show us things to come. He wants his people prepared. He doesn't want us to be unaware of what's happening, what's going to happen. He, he wants us to understand what has happened. Amen? Yeah. And he does these things through an inward vision, open vision, night vision, which is a dream, and trances. And there are certain ministries, uh, Maria Woodworth Etter had a ministry. In fact, she would be speaking, and not only she would go into a trance, but people in the congregation would go into trances. They would see heaven, hell. They would be taken out of their bodies and experience things in the spirit realm and then come back into their bodies under such great conviction and it would cause conviction throughout the entire congregation and we see salvation and people repenting and weeping and crying this we need again we need this again america has become so sterile that we we are afraid to be emotional what's up with that god's very emotional read the bible right Am I coming on too strong? No. Okay. All right. Uh, we must be comfortable living in the realm that we are eternally created for. We are created for the spiritual realm. We came from there. We're going back to there. And we live among this realm all the time. It's here with us. People think about heaven or the spiritual realm being afar off. It's not. It's another dimension right here, right now. And we can experience this realm. In fact, we are, should be experiencing this realm. And we see, when you go back to my videos, Jesus experienced it, right? The apostles experienced it. They saw angels, they saw demons, they spoke with them. They, they had people visit them from the other side. Think about the Mount of Transfiguration. Elijah and Moses came and were seen by not only Jesus, but by Peter, by, by the other uh, apostles that were there. Amen? Amen? This should be a natural walk. Do we seek after the dead? No, but let's get, it, let's get this straight. They're not dead. They're just living in that realm. Okay, there's a lot God is going to blow our minds in the next few years about the things that he's going to be doing with his people, his remnant. We need to be fearless and faithful to enter into the things of the Spirit. And that's what it takes. It takes faith, believing his word is spirit and truth. Right? How do we live out a word that's spirit? Faith. Faith. Yeah. By faith and because we are a spirit, okay? We're changing our identity from this natural temporal world into a total whole being, body, soul, and spirit. We've neglected our spiritual side, right? We have, even everything of the spirit we understand through here and not through here. And it's time to understand it from here. The Holy Spirit is given to us so that we understand it from here. Knowing each other by the Spirit, knowing everything else by the Spirit. Do you know, do you know that's why there's so many schisms among brothers and sisters in Christ? Because we know each other by the natural and not by the spiritual. That was just free. <laughs> we discuss transportation and translation in the Spirit and in the body. We looked at different um, different. Uh, scriptural references and um, I talked about my own translation when I was a child and so God would encourage you to go back and and look at that if you missed it because this is going to happen more and more is this last week, Alice? yeah last week um, all these things are part of our supernatural inheritance they are gifts from God they're not to be afraid of they are to be sought after. Paul said, seek the best gifts. And what is the best gift, Daniel? The gift you need at the time. Mm, that's good. Amen. Mm. They function as he, the Holy Spirit, wills according to the purposes of the Father. For the profit of all. Not to make you famous. They function for the profit of others. Right? 
So we got to keep our head and mind straight, our heart straight. We, we, we need to maintain a humble. Just because I'm fiery doesn't mean I'm not humble. Okay. Don't, 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 you can't question each other's motivations. You have people that are really fiery. It doesn't mean they're not humble. Right? right. I'm willing to lay down my life for you. I'm willing to give up my, my life for yours. I hope you all know that. I may seem hard on the outside because I am a warrior, but I cry over you. I weep when you weep. I'm with you. Amen. They must be taken seriously, earnestly, humbly, and with respect. We've looked at Holy Spirit as ordinary. Check your heart. All you tongue talkers, check your heart. He is God. Seek after Jesus, but be expectant for the glory to manifest in your life. If we seek after him, it will. It's promised. And it is the cycle, the progression of every natural, born-again Christian. There's a progression, and you see it in the mikvahs. Purification, repentance, identification, water baptism, right? The, 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 bapti the mikvah of the Holy Spirit, the mikvah of fire, the mikvah of suffering, and the mikvah of glory. And you've got to find out where are you in that spectrum. We, as the church whole, are entering into the times of the persecution and glory. And it's a cycle. More persecution, more glory. More persecution, more glory. And we're getting ready to go there. We've got to be okay with all that. That's why you can't have fear of man and go to the glory. Yeah. Yeah. That will stop you. Yes. Right? Okay. We see these things happening in the lives of devout followers of Jesus. Look, think about Ananias. Ananias was not um, a disciple. He wasn't one of the 12. I believe he was a disciple of Jesus, but not one of the 12. And he was told in a dream and a trance to go and seek out Paul, Saul, who was a murderer of Christians, right? God uses devout followers. You don't have to be a somebody. But you do have to be Jesus. You have to know who you are. Your identity has to be in him. Not in your own strength, in his strength. Your identity has to be in him. But you don't have to be a somebody with a big name. That's not what God's going to do. You're going to see that God is going to use the little lady that's in the prayer closet to part seas. You're going to see the miraculous happen. So if you're in all of this to make a name for yourself, you're in the wrong dispensation. You were born too late. Because the times of the great men and women of God is over. Now we are going to see the ecclesia rising up as one new man in the earth. Yes. Right? Yeah. Amen. That was prophetic. Yeah. <laughs> He's on me. Wow, that's good. That's good, Holy Spirit. You're doing good. <laughs> Yay, God. <laughs> These manifestations. <laughs> what did you say? What did you say? He wasn't worried. He wasn't worried. <laughs> we see these things happening in the lives of devout followers of Jesus. These manifestations have nothing to do with gender, age, education, income status, or anything else of the natural world. It doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian or how much your tithe is. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Nothing matters about that. It's not about the natural. This is about the spirit. Is your heart holy, sanctified, set apart for him? I think that's going to be the only criteria. Although he can use a donkey, right? Is that what he wants to do? No, he tried to talk to the, to the man on, on the donkey, right? Amen. What matters is your relationship with and your pursuit of Yeshua, 
Jesus. The things of the kingdom function by love, unity, and justice. They don't function by your need for fame, money, or recognition. The other side does. The other side does. The evil side does. Mm -hmm. That's right. We want the glory to manifest so that God can make his name great. Number one, God. Unbelievers can see his goodness and believe in him. Uh, God, others. He can set the captives free. Others. People can be healed and brought into the family of God. Others. People can learn of his ways and character, God and others. People can avoid the judgment to come, others. So the poor can have the gospel preached to them, others. So the poor in spirit can be lifted, others. Where's you? Where's me? Where's I in all this? No, this is, that's it. We make sacrifices for others. That's it. And that's where our hearts have to get to. We have to get to that place where we're willing to sacrifice everything for the sake of the kingdom of God. Right? Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, I, I finally, okay. <laughs> so that, <laughs> thank you, thank you. So that there is joy in the camp. That's what we get. We get the end product of joy, joy of doing our father's business, of seeing others prosper, be in health, get free. We get the joy of what God does through us so that the hungry and thirsty in the spirit are filled. Man. Okay, that was the review. That good? Okay, it was a shorter review, but I wanted to get to, I want to, get to this. Okay, so this week we're going to be talking about the utterance gifts. Uh, tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. And there's so much confusion about tongues. And it's silly. There is really no confusion. It's man-made, devil-made confusion is what it is. Because the scripture's clear, teachings are clear, and our experiences are very clear. Let's, let's read 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. So with that statement, there's a possibility you could be uninformed. And we have thousands of, of brothers and sisters that are very uninformed about tongues, interpretation, and prophecy, and basically all the gifts of the Spirit because they are uninformed about the Spirit himself. But he doesn't want us to be uninformed, so he's going to teach us. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. So there's a unity in the things of the Spirit, right? The Father has a plan, right? Jesus speaks the plan. The Holy Spirit empowers his church to complete, follow, execute the plan. It's really simple, that part, right? If you understand levels of authority, you'll understand that. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Or did it say so that the, we could be famous? No, no, it didn't say that. It said the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another a word of knowledge by, by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by that one Spirit to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. Mm -hmm. 
There's many manifestations of the Spirit of God. Don't get, get caught up on categories. Don't get caught up on categories. Okay, let him flow as he wills. Because you see, that's the main theme, right? He is giving these things out according to his will. And another, and another, and he's deciding who gets what based on the job they need to do, the anointing that they're to have, based on their destiny, because God knows what we're called to do. He knew it when we were born. Right? So the Spirit understands all of this and distributes to us what we need to fulfill our destiny. That's all this is about, right? For us to fulfill the destiny that He's given us. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. So we don't, we st we're stopping, we're stopping the lingo and the attitude about differences and we're concentrating on what troy distinctions distinctions, distinctions. Yeah. we have distinctions because we are each unique right yeah. we got to stop focusing on differences but focus on the distinction that we have to fulfill the job that needs to be fulfilled distinction of function distinction of purpose okay and each one is distinct and necessary. Each one of us is unique. Mm -hmm. yes. sure. There's not one less than another. He loves us all the same. In verse, in, in verse 10, it actually says, in the Greek literally says to another spiritual utterances in tongues and to another supernatural I'm sorry to another supernatural utterances in tongues and to another supernatural interpretation of tongues it's supernatural so is your mind going to understand it no, no it's not the whole aspect of it is weird to our cognitive greek mindset mind it's weird but not to God and not to the Spirit of God. And He knows what we need to get to our destiny. So there has to be some level of what? Faith. 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 Amen. Various or different kinds of tongues and interpretation, not translation. It's not a complete translation of what's being spoken. It's an interpretation of what's being spoken. Okay. These two gifts work together. Tongues, the gift of tongues, and the gift of interpretation of tongues, they work together. They belong together and are intimately connected. They can operate through one person or more than one person. A good example is Mike, uh, Kim's husband, Mike. He has tongues and interpretation. He's crossing over into some prophecy, which is really good. Uh, Brian has tongues and interpretation. I have a gift of tongues, but I, I can interpret my own tongues most of the time, but I don't haven't that I remember interpreted other tongues. I get a sense of what's I get a, a, a witness from the spirit of God and from my spirit that what I'm hearing is good and right, but I don't usually get get that. But I have prophecy, which is equal to tongues and interpretation. Okay. I've done that before. Interpreted other tongues. You have. It's not something. No. Most people will interpret their own. Yeah. But it can be. And I've seen it in church services. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it's a beautiful thing when the body works together in those things. There's it's a, a beautiful. testimony of a married couple that just did it so easily together. They just went up on the stage and said, it was like, she's going to pray in tongues and I'm going to interpret it. And everyone was like, well, how do you know what you're saying? We just do. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. It's a gift from the Holy Spirit. With both of these gifts, you may be able to interpret your own tongue and receive the mysteries that God wants you to understand. There are times um, in my prayer life where um, I know I'm praying in my prayer language and it's just between me and God, but then there's times when my, my tongue will change and I expect to get the interpretation of what I'm praying, and oftentimes I do. And I didn't, I didn't, really yearn for that gifting 
until I realized that it was a possibility. So when I'm telling you it's a possibility to interpret your tongues, ask the Holy Spirit to interpret the tongue for you so you understand the mysteries of God. A lot of times I get direction. I get, I, 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 it feels like I'm, it feels like I'm eavesdropping on a conversation between the Holy Spirit and God about the plans that he wants to execute in the earth. It's cool. Expect, expect it. Ask for it. Don't be satisfied with your mediocre prayer language. Amen? We're done with mediocrity. Right. We're done. Right. Got to go for it. Pers um, I would tell you, the one, the one thing that was really weird, the one time I did interpret my own tongues was at my baptism, at the, the, the mikvah of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I got filled with the Spirit and immediately went to the bathroom, was praying in the Spirit, and then I prayed this beautiful prayer that was magnifying God, and I thought, I don't pray like that. I don't even know how to pray. I was a new Christian. Later, I understood that I had interpreted the prayer that I was praying. Wow. Right? Yeah. I'm telling you, and it was effortlessly. I did it, I did it without even knowledge that it was a possibility. Yeah. And I think that's when God can work the most, when we get our minds out of the way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Amen. When you can't say no, that's not God. When you can't say no, that's not God. Very good. So, and how about, how about uh, you guys? Tongues and interpretation experiences. I started to interpret yours when you were praying over Keith. Mm, very good. But I don't have different kinds of tongues. Mine's always been the same. Ask for it. Ask for it. Just ask. <laughs> I didn't either, and then one day, I did. We seek after different things. You want it all. Don't you? You want it all. You want it all. Sunday when you, or no, maybe Thursday night, I'm not sure, but when you were praying, I was asking God for an interpretation, but really wasn't getting it, just knowing by the Spirit what it was, and then you interpreted what you had prayed. Amen. And then today, I'm out there, um, heart just crying out for the body, and uh, my prayer language, you know, the warfare that comes out of me, but it totally was opposite. It was just a plea for the people. Intercession. And so that tongue totally changed. Yeah. But it was yeah. such a great time. It's a weird thing when the tongue when the tongue changes. When it first started happening to me, uh, mine was more like more I don't know Latin-y or Mexican, Spanish or th like that. And then all of a sudden, I'm sounding Chinese. It's like what was that? It was like hard for my mouth. Like I'm not used to those yeah. syllables, and it took me a while to feel comfortable to just allow it to flow, even if it sounds Chinese. Yeah. Right? Uh, it was yeah. weird. Where it changes so much, your mouth gets tired because you're not used. You're to You're not used to words forming like, like that. that. Yeah. yeah, it's very, it's very cool, very interesting. Um, but it's you, you yield, you yield. Yeah. When it starts to happen, you just yield to it. Anybody else with tongues and interpretation? I like the testimony that you had of when we were at the church and like the tribal music was really playing yeah. and Mike went up and started dancing like an Indian. You're like, you thought it was Norman. weird. Norman. I, Norman, yeah. You thought it was like weird or something. And uh -huh. God was like, you think that's weird. You think that's and weird. And your tongue started going into Indian sound. Yes. Like, that. Yeah. He likes to make fun of me a lot. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does. He makes me eat my, eat my words all the time. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to be put in a box. Right. Okay, so let's talk about what the gift is not. Okay, it's not the common gift of praying in tongues when you are baptized in the Spirit. Everyone gets a language of their own to pray and communicate with their Father, right? That's praying in tongues, ordinary tongues. Okay, the gift of speaking in tongues in a corporate situation or even in your prayer life is different. It's not common okay commonly you when you're filled with the spirit you can have this prayer language that is with you always but the gift of tongues is something extra okay it's something more eventually it may feel totally normal to you but i remember when mike was just we we're all just in a thursday night we were all just praying in the spirit and he started 
into a tongue for interpretation. And both Neil and I had to like speak to him afterwards because we, we didn't interpret it, but we wanted him to know that was a tongue for interpretation and you should have interpreted it. I don't know if he was aware that it was a tongue for interpretation. So as we are in these, in these meetings and things happen, we've got to be able to take instruction and to say, hey, that was this, and you know, go with it, go with it. And now he does it all the time. I mean, he just does it all the time. Yeah, it was a learning. Yeah, learning time. it was a learning time. Yeah. And I went through that too. We all go through that, or we don't, and then nothing ever happens to us, yeah. right? Just yield yourself, be teachable, and then you're gonna just grow so fast. It can also be a, a tongue that is a tongue. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Okay. We're gonna talk about that. Okay, so it's not just a com the common gift of praying in tongues when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's a unique prayer language. That is a unique prayer language between your spirit and God. And it's also the overflow of being filled with the Spirit. It's like you're just so full that the Spirit just overflows you. We're talking about your prayer language. Personal prayer language is the birthright of every Spirit-baptized believer. Every believer baptized in the Spirit can have a prayer language, but not every believer will have the gift of tongues with interpretation. It's as the Spirit wills. But your prayer life, your prayer time, your prayer language is yours. It belongs to you. It's a privilege for every believer. Let's look at Mark 16, verses 15 through 18. And he said to them, Go into the, all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any de deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. It is our God-given inheritance to speak with new tongues. Birthright. Birthright. Like Birthright. Yeah. Prior to P the Pentecost experience, no one spoke in new tongues. Jesus said, when the Spirit comes, right? It's new tongues, new tongues. Well, if there's new tongues, what would that indicate? There's old tongues. Thank you, there's old tongues. Mm -hmm. New tongues, new languages, new kanos, recently made, fresh, recent, unused, unworn, of a new kind, unprecedented, novel, Uncommon, unheard of. That's what that means. If Jesus brought a new covenant with new tongues, then was there an old covenant? Yes. And there was an old tongue. Genesis 11, 1 through 9. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top to the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. Hmm. Interesting. That was their fear, right? And the, Lord, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is, this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will, not, will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name is now called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. So there was a language they all spoke. They all understood, 
and God had given it to them. And then it was broken up and they were dispersed. No longer could they understand each other's language. He divided the languages. And when we receive tongues, we start speaking that heavenly language where sometimes it sounds a bit like this, a bit like that, a bit like that one, a bit like that one. And it all comes together because it's the original language of heaven. It wasn't Hebrew. Hebrew had not been exist, it was not in existence. It was not Hebrew. It was a heavenly language that could be commun they could communicate with God. God's Hebrew was birthed at the confusion of Babel. It was one of the languages separated out of. And in fact, it goes back to Hebrews closer to the oldest language ever found. So it was like the, pre, the root. Hebrew was the root of all the languages. God spoke with Adam in the garden, the language of heaven. With the fall, Adam lost his home and dominion. With Babel, mankind lost the full language of heaven. It was fragmented. Remember that salvation is progressive. The fall is also progressive, right? Men lived for years, hundreds of years, and then finally, now we only live 80. The, the effects of sin are progressive. Grayson? So if, if your point of God spoke with Adam in the garden, the language of heaven, uh -huh. then does that mean the serpent in the garden also knew that language? Possibly. We don't know that. There's tongues of angels. We're going to get to that. that. Hang on. There's tongues of angels. Okay. Adam would have had to be able to understand that tongue. God. There was only one language. Then it exactly. There's, you're, we're going to see. We're going to break it down further. Okay. So go through it and then save your questions for when we get through that. Okay. Okay. Uh, with Babel, mankind lost the full language of heaven. It was fragmented. With Jesus' resurrection, our authority and dominion was restored, right? And with the giving of the Spirit, our heavenly language was restored. The new tongue that Jesus restored is the mother tongue of heaven. In Isaiah 28, 11, so with stammering lips in a foreign accent, Adonai will speak to this people. He is prophesying about the day when we would be filled with the Spirit and Adonai would speak to us directly. That is so cool, you guys. What language do your kids speak? Parents. The language of the parents. parents. Tongues is the language of our father. Okay. That's just really clear, right? Mm -hmm. That's really basic. Yeah. We, we try to compl complicate it, but it's really basic. We're heavenly creatures on this earth with a heavenly father and a heavenly language. Our kids speak our language. We are God's kids, born of water and the Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us the ability to speak God's language so we can converse with him directly. The gifts of, or the various kinds of tongues and interpretation is not the natural knowledge of other languages. It's not a natural knowledge of other languages. You may speak other languages uh, as the Spirit wills, but it's because, but it's, you've never learned that language in the natural. And all of a sudden you're able to speak that language, right? Yeah. When the gift is in operation, the one giving the utterance may not understand it at all. We may give a message in tongues and not understand what we're saying. But an interpreter, someone who has got the gift of interpretation, will be able to interpret it. Or if we speak a, a language that is like, say I go to Africa and all of a sudden God empowers me to speak their language, I may not even understand what I'm saying to them, but the Holy Spirit will know what he's saying to them. Yeah. So keeping our mind out of the situation uh, will allow the Spirit to move move through us full, fully. The gift of interpretation is not translation. It is interpreting or giving the meaning and the heart of what the tongue is conveying. The tongue may be long and the interpretation may be short or vice versa. The interpretation gives the sense and the meaning of the tongue. 
Okay, let's look at type of tongues, and this is where your questions will start getting answered. There's ordinary tongues, which is our prayer language, and I don't by any means want to make you think that that's ordinary. That is as supernatural as any other thing that the Spirit of God does. Amen? But for the sake of our discussion, we'll say ordinary tongues, which is our prayer language. There are diverse kinds of tongues of the world. That's the different languages in the world. And there are diverse kinds of tongues of the spirit world. That's where we're getting to. Let's talk about the ordinary gift of tongues. Prayer language that comes when you receive the gift or the promise of the Holy Spirit. It's the natural overflow of being filled. This tongue does not need interpretation. Um, um, it's your spirit with the Holy Spirit speaking to God. He understands it. So he doesn't need it interpreted. Right? We need it interpreted if we want to understand what we're praying unto him. But there's reasons why he may not want us to understand. But sometimes he may want us to understand and we need to be open to that. Jude admonishes us in verse 20 to build ourselves up on our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. This is the prayer in tongues, the prayer, your prayer language. It builds you up in your faith. Oh, I love the story of Yonggi Cho, how he prays in tongues constantly and hours and hours and hours and hours a day. And the presence of God is on him like so strong. And John Bevere, who we knew um, in, in Texas, and met in, and then later uh, he came and spoke at our church, he talked about picking up Yonggi Cho from the airport. And he said when he got in the back of the car, God got in the back of the car with him. And he, and he attributes it to his prayer language, that he prays constantly, constantly in the Holy Spirit. Okay, And we should too. We should too. Um, I'll tell you this, there's, there's times when, and Connie even asked me, your sister even asked me once, can you pray in the spirit in your head? Yes, you can. It's not really in your head, it's in your spirit, man. But yes, you can, you don't have to speak it out. So if you're in a place where you, don't, you need to be silent, you can still be praying. Isaiah 28, 11 and 12 says that praying in the Holy Spirit gives your soul rest. Casting all your care on him. Amen. Amen. Praying in the Spirit does more than we can explain. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14 that he prayed in tongues more than all of them. It's a direct communication to God. We pray the perfect will of God. Sometimes we don't know the perfect will, but the Holy Spirit knows. So we allow him to pray through us, the perfect will of the Father. Because it's a legal, it's a legal thing. If we don't release God's will into the earth, God doesn't just do it. We release it. We release it. Do you know that the things that are happening now were prayed for a long, long time ago? From the beginning, the prophets saw it. They released it into the earth. It builds up your spirit, man. It stimulates or stirs you up in your faith. It loosens, it looses the, it loose, loosens, looses. looses. It looses the mysteries of God into the earth, praying the unknowns. It bypasses your mind of unbelief. That's probably the biggest reason. It bypasses your mind of unbelief. Because it's hard sometimes when you need something so badly for you to believe if you pray that God will do it. Pray in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit believes God will do it for you. <laughs> Amen? Speaks the language of heaven's courtroom. Oftentimes, when I am praying in the Spirit, I have the sense that I'm in front of of the courts of heaven and I am pleading my case. This happens to me a lot. Sometimes I get an interpretation. Sometimes I know what's going on there, but a lot of times I don't. I just have a sense that I'm in the courtroom and I am pleading someone's case. It brings refreshing. It allows you to worship in the way he deserves to be worshiped. 
We don't know all of the lingo in the courtroom, right? But the Holy Spirit does. He knows the lingo. He knows, you know, when you're going to meet the king or the queen or you're going to meet a dignitary, they're going to spend time with you for a few hours explaining how you speak, how you bow, how you do this, how you do that. The etiquette that you must have. The Holy Spirit can do all of that for you. You don't have to be schooled to come before the Father. He knows exactly the words that need to be spoken. Right? Makes you more aware of the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. By praying in the Spirit makes you more aware God is in you. That's an awesome revelation, you guys. The wisdom of God is released to us by praying in the Holy Spirit. It lets us reach the unknown parts of ourselves and others to intercede. And so much more. I would encourage you, if you, if you need more information on speaking in tongues and the, the benefits of it, um, Dr. Bill Hammond wrote this book, 70 Reasons for Speaking in Tongues. As you grow in praying in tongues, you may notice that they begin to get more fluid and more change, they change accents. Uh, ask God for the interpretation so that your mind can know the mysteries that he wants to reveal to you. He wants to reveal mysteries to his children, to his people, not just the prophets. He wants us to be knowing of him, knowing of the times, knowing of the, of the works of the enemy, the strategies that are being used against us. All of this can be revealed through praying in the spirit and asking for the interpretation or the revelation of what you're praying. You know, I think people stop praying in the spirit because they don't get any revelation in their minds. But I'm saying, ask, ask, and he will give you, he will give it to you. Okay. Then you won't get bored about praying in the spirit. If you're, if you're getting downloads from God about the future or about something or someone, it's very interesting. It's like, whoa, he's letting me see all this. You know, for the purpose of intercession, prayer, and declaration, fighting for them, pleading their case. It's very exciting, well, at like least to me. Saying recently, expectancy. Expectancy. should be in our yes. prayer language as well. Exactly. We've been yeah. too complacent. Hmm. Paul said that he prayed in the Spirit and in his understanding. You pray in the Spirit and then you begin to pray in English and let him fill your mouth with the English words that you understand. I pray in the spirit and then I pray in my understanding. Okay, and we will always talk about this. We pray in the spirit, then we pray in English. We pray in the spirit, then we pray in English. But let me tell you, I think it's more than this. I think it's praying in the spirit and then praying in English according to the spirit allowing the spirit to pray in English or the interpretation of your tongue. Yeah. Expect it, expect interpretation of your tongue. A lot of the times when I start out to pray, like I'll just pray in tongues first. And it, like, for me, I feel like it's almost a, um, it's either a kickstart yeah. for a prayer or it's a delay for my mind to go blank and to see what God wants me to pray. Very good, yeah. yeah. Tongues is great for that. Mm -hmm. It's great for that. Um, I want to watch um, this video, um, and you're going to start, it's Kenneth Hagin, um, and he starts off with prophecy, but then he starts speaking in tongues and interpreting the tongues. Okay, so we're just going to watch it, just a little bit of it. Oh, um, okay, why aren't you seeing it? Because okay. I gotta do That's duplicate. You gotta exit the. I just gotta do duplicate. That works too. You see it? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Expand that full screen.
Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thus saith the Lord, that which I said unto you will now come to pass. You see, there is a time for all things. And though something has been said, and though something has been promised, it doesn't necessarily happen overnight. For it has been said centuries ago, centuries before Christ ever came. It was prophesied, it was said that he would come. And he came. And then he himself said that he's coming again. Amen. Well, years have come. Scores of years. Yes. A couple of centuries have come. But he will come. And so the Spirit has spoken unto many who sit here tonight. And has said certain things unto them. Concerning their life. Concerning their ministry. Concerning their family. And even some things have been said concerning the nation. And now it is time. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. The Spirit keeps saying, it shall come to pass. It shall, it's canola, it's canola, it's canola, it's canola, brage, solofrehevi gandokai. Those secrets that you pray out with the Father. For it's written, he that speaketh an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. How being in the Spirit, he speaketh mysteries, or divine secrets. And so those secrets that you talk to God about, those mysteries that you prayed through, hey, 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 into manifestation shall they come. Yeah. For this is the day, and this is the hour, and this is the time. Now, at this time, there shall be a greater manifestation of the spirit of seeing and the spirit of knowing. A greater manifestation of the revelation gifts of the spirit, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. You've seen a sprinkling of these things. I hear a little, very little. But now you shall see, for it shall shock me. Oh, yes, yes, now, now, not just shortly, but now, now, come to pass. A spirit of seeing, the spirit of knowing in the manifestation shall come. And the spirit of seeing and the spirit of knowing into manifestation, having come, will bring you into a place of greater faith. Yes. Yeah, and the gift of faith, special faith, shall be in manifestation. Now you've seen it in man and observed it in manifestation in a measure, but no one has ever seen the measure in which it will be manifested in these days. Yes. And the working of miracles, working of miracles in the full orbit of manifestation shall come. And the gifts of healings, gifts of healings, like showers of rain falling everywhere. Gifts of healings and manifestation. And the glory of the Lord will shine upon his people. And the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon his people. <laughs> and the cloud of his glory shall be seen by many at times. For into full manifestation. Even as the cloud filled the temple of Solomon's when it was dedicated. The cloud filled the temple. The glory of the Lord filled the temple. So that the priest could not stand to minister. So it shall be the spiritual temple. The church of the living God. Filled with the spirit. Ha ha ha. People will not be able to stand. But in his presence fall. You think these things are strange these are just the beginnings now walk in reverence before me saith the Lord respond unto the call of God respond unto those whom I have put into position of leadership respond unto the prophet 
And so thou shalt see the glory of God upon thee, upon thy family, upon thy loved ones, upon those around about you, and the blessings shall flow like rivers of living water. Yes. Ha, 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 ha. Yee, constangala brati, consto lalambrati, consto lala, no, 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 consto lalinina, lalinina, yalona. <laughs> Ego lo bragem skento. As ustum prithrasti tom prithrade en sgenangra duchka na prathete. Did you see, look, I'm going to dissect it a little bit. But did you see, it was hard for him to even like pronounce the word because it's a diverse kind of tongue, something he's not used to. It's not his prayer language. God is speaking through him in the way God wants to speak to him. And the other thing I want you to notice is it's a conversation. I was say, yeah. It's a conversation. Yeah, going back and forth. Yes, and this is what God wants with us. Don't you want your kids to sit down and have a conversation with you? That's what a father wants. And that's what he wants from you and me. He wants to converse with us. You see, tongues with interpretation is equivalent to prophecy. So I speak with tongues and I interpret. Or I could prophesy. But he has a divine purpose. And stone staker, stone staker. So thou shalt see, so thou shalt see, so that shall be manifested unto thee. Manifested unto thee. And thou will not have to ask your neighbor. Uh, you'll know for yourself. And you will not have to inquire concern of a friend concerning the future. Thou shalt know for thyself. Thou shalt know for thyself. It at the protege des to Mabre. I'm reluctant to say that, Lord. I'm reluctant to say that. I'm reluctant to say that. Oh, 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 Nama, oh, Nama, Nama, oh, Papa, Lee for the Thelis. Oh, it shall come. It shall come. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Air, 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 this year is out. It shall come to pass. Ha, ha, ha. Ooh, 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 Macalini. Macalini, Macalini. As we move from the day beginning to the day. And then from the day beginning to the day. I don't know Macalini. I don't know Macatini. You, you don't know Macatini. You don't know Macatini. <laughs> you don't know Macatini. You don't know Macatini. You don't know Macatini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, 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 come. 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 Come, come, held, that which is bound, that which has deterred, that which has hindered, shall be taken out of the way. Amen. The last vestige, yeah. the last vestige shall be removed. Yes. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. I would encourage I would encourage all, all of you to watch the whole thing. I watched this a few months ago and it affected me in a way that I'm trying to convey to you is that God wants more. He wants us to understand this gifting more. And he wants us to commune with him more. He wants to release mysteries to us now. He's ready to release those strategies he said he would release to you. He wants to, and you have to get it by the Spirit. And to do that, you need to speak in tongues and interpret. Okay? Specifically you. Okay? Uh, and I noticed that my tongues and interpretation increased after I realized that it could happen. If we don't know it can happen, we won't believe for it. Right? Yeah. So we got to know. We got to know. Amen? 
Where am I? Am I this one? I'm in this one. My spirit was jumping when he was talking about um, the like the greater release of like seers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just like the Holy Spirit like point at me and say you. <laughs> that was 22 years ago. Yeah. 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 The year you were born. That's yeah. 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 Okay, how do I get this? You duplicated your I know, that's what I think so too. How do I Troy, how do I get this off? You probably got I probably got another one open down here. Let me just put this down. Yeah. There you go. There we go. You got it now? Okay. Um so we watched that and well so what do you think? Pretty odd, right? Pretty pretty awesome, pretty odd. Mm -hmm. um, so get ready because we're getting ready to get really weird according to the world standards. Yeah. We're getting ready to get really weird according to the world standards. And we have to have no fear of man, yeah. right? Yeah. We're going to be different. We are, you don't even know how different we're going to be than the world. They've never experienced this. They've never experienced it. Yeah, that's sad, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But God's going to visit them too, and they'll have an opportunity. Did you notice how God's, as, as he's speaking with Kenneth, he speaks on his level because he, he, he speaks the language of the King James, but God doesn't have, God doesn't mind that. Right. He doesn't say, well, you, you're speaking like this. It's not about that as much as it is the communication. Right. right. Yeah. That's a, Good point. Upbringing and yeah. Yeah. habit, um, much like somebody with an accent. Yeah. Right. Well, he spoke to Bob Jones very simply. Yeah. 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 Uh, I was going to say, um, if, if he's... Speaking it, hearing, and discerning it, and not, or if he's speaking it and discerning it, then his discernment might go to the scriptures and how they say it. True. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it's true. An audible voice of him yeah. telling him in his words right. the day that is now. Yeah, true, true. I notice that too. Sometimes God will say something I really don't understand the word he uses, and I'll have to look it up, mm -hmm. you know, and he'll do that too. So sometimes you might, he might say something, give you a word, and you're like, what is that word? Like when he told you that Danny was to be a dignitary. Yeah. You didn't know what dignitary was. What is that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Proverbs Let's... says it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search it out. Very yeah. good. Right. Very good. Okay, so now that was, that was your ordinary prayer language, right? We saw him prophecy, prophesying first and then tongues and interpretation, right? Okay, uh, diverse kinds of tongues of this world. 1 Corinthians 14.10 says, There are doubtless many different languages in the world, and none is without meaning. There's many different languages. We, we can avouch for that. Now that we have a global-like overview, we can hear news from all over the world in different languages. Thousands of languages and many more dialects. There's thousands upon thousands of languages. This gift enables a person to speak supernaturally in another, uh, in another person's language and various other languages. A language that the person is speaking is unfamiliar with. So I might be unfamiliar with something, but if God gives me this tongue to speak in diverse kinds of tongues of the world, then we, I could maybe speak French or German or a dialect in Africa. And you know, if he's going to translate us somewhere, we better be able to speak the language, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Oh, you think I'm you think I'm like crazy, right? Oh, no. <laughs> or maybe they'll mm -hmm. understand our. Language. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they'll yeah. understand yeah. our language. Yeah. That's right. Um, like the day of Pentecost when Peter went out into the street, there was a lot of people there from different places and different languages spoken, but they all heard Peter in their own language. When, on the, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and 
rested on each one of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. That was a gift from the Holy Spirit, the gift of speaking in a tongue, the different tongue of the world. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that, they, that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia. Thank you. And Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to the Cyrene. And visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. That's a lot of different languages. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask or think. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said they are filled with new wine. So you're having those that are going to be amazed and in awe, and you're going to have those that are like poo-pooing God. And we see it today. It's happening right around us. Don't be concerned about what the poo-pooers say. Encourage those that are hearing and seeing. Their eyes and hearts are being opened. Yeah. Amen? And what does being filled with new wine mean? Alcohol have anything to do with what just happened anyway? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You're either all hearing them in your own language, even though they're only speaking right. their own language. They're looking for a way not to believe. That's right. They're looking for a way out not to believe. Yeah. Because their minds are going to get in the way of what God is doing. Okay, let's watch this. Um, so it's from uh, Sid Roth on uh, David Robertson. Let's do that one first. No, let's do the supernatural one. Okay, let me find it here. I think it's this one. Are you seeing it? Yes. Okay. One thing that intrigued me immensely, they said, they had a supernatural language that came from God. And I know a lot of people say they don't want non-believers to hear the supernatural language, but it intrigued me no end. And so then after I became a believer in the Messiah, I wanted that supernatural language. So I went to a, a meeting and someone prayed for me and they said, well, speak in that supernatural language. And I... You know, no one told me that maybe I can't. I'm glad I didn't know anything. I was always like a little child. You know, that's the way you're supposed to be. <laughs> and I started speaking in a supernatural language. But then immediately, a little voice in my head said, you're making it up. Yep. <laughs> now, none of you ever had that problem. None, none of you ever had. Well, that little voice, I'm sure, is talking to many people. And, I, and so I stopped. I mean, I love God. I don't want to make something up. And one day, I was with a rabbi that received Jesus, an Orthodox rabbi. And he began, he said, he called me over. So I met him before. He said, Sid, come here. This woman wants prayer. There was a woman. She was pregnant. And the doctor said she had a stillborn baby. Now, I'm a brand new believer. You're asking me to pray for a dead person to come back to life? I didn't know what to pray. And so all of a sudden, I started praying in my supernatural language that I doubted was really from God. <laughs> and after we finished praying, she left. And the rabbi said to me, Sid, where did you learn that ancient form of Aramaic? I, I barely speak Hebrew. I don't know any Hebrew, you know? And when he said that, he not only said it was an ancient form of Aramaic, he told me what I was praying because he knew that language. Yes. And he said, you prayed that the child, the spirit of the child is with God the Father and be at rest. I said that. Now, there's no way, I, no way I could have said that with my mind. No. And after that point, 
I never doubted that that language was real. Amen. 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 This is Dave Roberson. And uh, he, he is an evangelist. Uh, he worked in all different countries, mostly not America. Um, but he had great healing miracles. Now, Dave, uh, what? I'm sorry. It resets it every time I do that. What happened to you, and this is the most wonderful thing, what happened to you can happen to anyone that's hungry for God. You even speak now in languages you've never been instructed. Tell me about that. But as I continued to pray in tongues, and the power continued to Okay, increase. let me, I didn't go through, I, the whole thing is awesome. Because this guy, he lost his job. And he got into his closet, literally, every day for eight hours. He thought, well, I'm not working. I can work for God. So for eight hours a day, for one, two, three months, Monday through Friday, wow. he prayed in tongues. Okay, just to encourage you. And then all this stuff started happening to him. So that's the power of praying in tongues. And the meetings started taking place like overseas. When... Uh, uh, by the way, that night that he filled 5,000 people's teeth with mm -hmm. silver and gold, it was 200,000 Hindus born again. That is power. One night. <laughs> that is power in one night. And we averaged, I, I averaged that week out, that year we had 4,000 born again a week. Tell me one language you spoke of that you were never instructed. Japanese. How do you know it was Japanese? Because there was a missionary to Japan who spoke Japanese. And I was exhorting the crowd and teaching them. And he says, wait a minute. And he came up and said, you know that? You're doing that in Japanese? And he began to translate. French, Russian, Spanish. That sure beats your in high school. <laughs> but we're talking about a supernatural language. If you are born from above. Amen. There's, there's no uh, limit to what God can do, and we need to take the limits off of him so he can do some miraculous things. Diverse kinds of tongues of the world do not need public interpretation, as the recipients will understand. If you are in a crowd, translation is good to give glory to God. Okay, you're speaking to somebody in their own language. You don't need to interpret that. Right? You don't need to translate it. But if there's a translator there, what glory would that give to God? Amen? Yeah. So it's always it's good if you can translate it. Okay, we're going to talk about a couple of people. Uh, this is Charles F. Parham, the founder of Bethel Bible School in Topeka, Kansas. He was one of the fathers of Pentecostalism. He was one of the precursors to Azusa Street. And this is Agnes Osman. She was a student of Parham's. And she was first to be filled with the Spirit in his school. Parham claimed an ecstatic experience of speaking Swedish while Agnes Osman both spoke and wrote in Chinese. Can you imagine just sitting down and you're writing by the Spirit and all of a sudden you're writing Chinese? That's not easy either. <laughs> I know. No. Yeah, you like see it or something. So I want to expose you to these things so that you can believe for bigger, more, okay? So Stanley wrote that he saw cloven tongues of fire come into the meeting room, descending and enabling him to speak another language, something he saw others do as well. Those assembled all sang, Jesus loves me, Jesus lover of my soul, in at least six different languages while surrounded by a miraculous glow of white light. Parham's telling of the story is very much reminiscent of the narrative in Acts 2. Pretty awesome, right? Sandhu Sundar Salvaraj, um, he's, he's a prophet of God, and um, you can see his videos on YouTube. 
There was an evening where the power of God was tangibly present as I preached on the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. The convicting power of the Holy Spirit was so strong that almost all the youth began to cry, being convicted and repenting of their sins. All of a sudden, the 15-year-old girl came running up to the stage and fell crying at my feet. She was speaking in a strange language, which was not her native Nepalese. Most Indians know at least two or three, uh, three languages, but no one among the 600 youths could understand her. She went on crying and saying something in that strange language all throughout the evening. Many girls who shared the same dormitory with her testified the next day that she kept on crying and speaking in the, in the strange language all night. She did not sleep. The next day, the final day of the meeting, she continued her crying and speaking the same strange language. Again, she came up to the stage and kept on speaking. I didn't know what to do. A 17-year-old ex-Buddhist monk happened to come to the meeting on that last day. He was seated in the front near the stage, and I noticed him straining his ears to listen to what the girl was saying. Looking shocked, he came up to me and said, Uncle, this girl is speaking in my dialect spoken in the most remo remote part of eastern Bhutan. Now, uh, not many people know the dialect because our community is very small. I asked him, please tell me what she is saying. Listening intently again, he said that she was confessing her sexual sins, illicit affair, and hurting her parents by eloping with her lover. She was also repenting for hurting her, the Lord uh, by her sins and for nailing the Lord's hands and feet to the cross. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome, right? You know, she probably couldn't repent in the way she needed to repent and the Holy Spirit allowed her to. That's mercy. That's just mercy. I brought conviction. It brought conviction of sin and of righteousness over the entire congregation, he said. So that's diverse kinds of tongues of the world. Now let's talk about diverse kinds of tongues of the spirit world. Different kinds of languages are spoken in the spirit realm. There's different types of creatures, and they each have their own language, all known by God. Paul, when he was caught up into the third heaven, said he heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful for man to utter. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels. Right? Different. Different. Right? So this is going to answer your questions. All kinds of languages in the spirit realm. Roland Buck, a minister from Boise, Idaho, experienced visitations from angels of God in the late 70s. On one account, in one encounter, he heard them speaking to one another in their own language. People that experience being taken to heaven as well as scriptures talk about the different voices that they hear. The voices of the 24 elders, the voices of the living creatures, the voices from God's throne, the voice from the four horns of the golden altar, the voice of the seven thunders, the voices from heaven, voice of the cherubim wing, voices of the, of the Godhead. Creation has a voice, mountains, flowers, things sing there. There's all kinds of languages spoken. Any questions on that? Have you ever thought about it? Not much. No. no. Kind of like, okay, we got to expand our mind. Yeah. So then they all speak their own language, but they can all interpret each other through the Spirit. Probably, yes. So then that would explain the garden a little more. If that was how Very was good. There. Exactly. That would explain the garden. Yeah. Because well, he had the mind of God. Adam, the woman, and, you know, Adam and his, Adam, the both of them, they had the mind of God. You know, so they understood, they understood it. Yeah. yeah. And all earth groans. Yes, the whole creation. Groan. Yes, and they cry out. The blood so cries even out. Groaning, it's language. It's language. See, we think of groaning as just groaning, but it's language. Yes, very good, Lisa. Yeah, it makes me think of how he said, um, if we don't praise him, even the rocks will cry out. Even the rocks and will truly, cry out. Yes, everything admits a frequency. Yes, yes, a resonance. That's how the world was created, both by resonance of God's voice. It brings order. It brings order to chaos. And you see that when they're, when they're doing the, um, have you ever seen the, the Buddhist monks when they're, they're 
creating this resonance and they put a pile of sand on a board and pretty soon it creates a pattern. Mm, yeah. It's real. Yeah. And we're weaponizing sound now. Yes, we're yeah. weaponizing yeah. sound. Yes. Yeah, we have sound weapons yes. on boats and ships. Yes. I'm telling you. That's right. Hmm. We... Yeah, they said that, remember that sonic use in Cuba? Yes. <laughs> that it had caused brain damage. Brain damage in some, yes. Yeah. I, 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 I noticed something interesting when we were praying for Amber. Um, Andrea, we were praying, we were casting out some demons, and um, Andrea did the thing that she does. Mm -hmm. It's a weird thing. But she hits this resonance. It's like a singing, but it's just a one note, and it's, it's a resonance. And I knew right then that order was coming to Amber. Like she, was, she was singing order over her. There wasn't, it wasn't words. It was just a note, and it was bringing order. And, and Neil had prophesied over here that she would be like a trumpet. And see, trumpet emits that note and it brings order so there's all kinds of gifts that we need to tap into there's all kinds of giftings that we need to not poo poo not not say that can't be god you know we'll know by the spirit if it's god or not it might be weird but we should judge it by the spirit not by the natural outward manifestation but if, spirit, but if you're not judge, connected to the spirit and to know your judge, own spirit, you judge, it by the natural. you judge it by the natural. If your natural mind is preeminent, your spirit man is down here, then you have to change that because we have to walk by the spirit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So praise God for that. And that takes work. And that takes work. It takes work, but it's, it's great. It's getting to know God, yeah. right? Okay, so we've got, we've got your ordinary prayer language, we've got the diverse, diversity in tongues of the world, and we have the diversity of tongues in the spirit realm. Okay, three different areas. Wow. Okay, so let's talk about giving a message in tongues. It's something God wants to say. Remember, he's releasing a fragment of what the sounds of heaven, he's releasing a fragment of it through us into the earth right? He wants to say something to an entire congregation or group, or he wants to give you mysteries, right? So usually it's for edification, exhortation, or comfort. Sometimes it can be instructional. It can be a warning, or he's revealing the sins of the church. Okay. We saw that. We see that in scripture. Um, so there's a lot of things that can happen, but usually tongues and interpretation in a congregation is for exhortation, edification, comfort. But it can be a warning and it can be a sin that needs to be exposed. Okay. If you can't interpret it, don't give it. Unless you know there are those in the meeting who can't interpret. Because it needs to be interpreted. And how do you know that? By the Spirit. By asking, by the Spirit, until you, until you train your spiritual senses, right? Mm -hmm. You ask those around you that are in the know, that are more mature, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. right? Um, they, tongues and interpretation are, should be, like any gift of the Spirit, should be done decently and in order, meaning that if we're all worshiping God and somebody blurts out tongues while you're still worshiping, that kind of interrupts your worshiping God, right? There's a time. So you wait for the appropriate time when things are quieted down and we're listening to the Lord and we're trying to discern what, what is God doing? What does he want to say, if anything? How is, the, how is the Holy Spirit? How are we moving? How are we going to flow? That's the time to say, I think I have a word. I think I have a tongue. Or if you're more mature and you're used to giving them, that's the time to give it. Then that tongue will be judged. Is it from God? We'll know by our spirit, even before the interpretation is given, we'll know that that tongue is a tongue from God. And then once we know that tongue is a tongue from God, then we wait for the interpretation. If there's no interpretation, then we have to question whether we hear from God, don't we? Right? It would be a learning experience for us all. 
It can sound a little different than your normal prayer language. If you give out a message in tongues for the corporate body, it can sound a little different. Or there's a, there's a you know, it's different. You, what I sense when I hear it is an authority, not of them, their own, but it's God. I, I sense that that's something extraordinary, right? It should flow with what's going on in the service. That's another way to judge it. Does it flow with what's going on? It can be judged as a true tongue for interpretation by the spirits of those present and those who are experienced even before the interpretation is given. Just said that. Um, it may be long or short while the interpretation is long or short. It doesn't matter on length, right? But what does matter is, is the interpretation matching the sense of what the tongue was matching. If the tongue is vibrant and err uh, and like that, you're not going to have usually this little mousy interpretation, right? It's going to flow somewhat. It's going to have the same feeling, spiritual sensing that the tongue does. Intensity, yeah. A tongue given can be pure from the Holy Spirit, and that will lead people to worship God. It will lead people to turn to God, to repentance, or to exalt Him, to worship, you know, to, to, it should be great, or it should be truly reflective, okay? A tongue can be demonic, and I've heard demonic tongues, and we'll say, man, not only was that not a good tongue, that was like, that made me feel like I've just been pooped on, right it gives you that bad feeling of heaviness and it's like oh that's a demonic tongue remember he mim mimics everything mm -hmm. or it can be carnal it can be the person's own spirit what's what god is dealing with them about a mixture of the holy spirit and their own sense their own filter okay their filters a little tainted right so you can pick that up and that's why you'll hear like prophecy given or tongues and interpretation. It's like, okay, that part was God. That part was you. <laughs> you know, I mean, you'll be able to sense where they can flow in and out of it. Right. And that's okay. We need to be trained in that area so that we can be sharp when we're at uh, meetings and gatherings. We'll know we'll not be led astray. God doesn't want us led astray. Amen. He wants to know. He wants us to know. So interpretation, supernatural endowment by the Holy Spirit that enables the person with the gift to receive an interpretation of the message in tongues through inspiration. The interpretation comes just like the tongue comes by the Holy Spirit. It's not something you think, oh, I think that word, I think I recognize that word. Oh, it sounds like judgment. Oh, God is judging us. And then you start talking about God judging. It's, that's not it. You will know. It will, the, the interpretation will drop into your spirit and you will know what it is. It is also illumination that comes to the spirit of the person as a lamp lighting up so the person can understand the meaning of the tongue. The lampstand in the tabernacle gave light to the word, right? The showbread was the symbol of the word. The lamp gives light to the word. And that's what happens is the Holy Spirit gives us light into what God is saying through the tongue. The gift enables the person to interpret, verbalize, and render in an understandable language a message in tongues that has been given. The person giving the tongues may or may not understand it. But usually the person that gives the tongue will have a sensing that the interpretation matches the tongue that they gave. The interpretation of the tongue should match the flow of the spirit as well as the spiritual essence of the tongue. The interpretation should be judged as good for the congregation to receive or reject. We will go further into judging prophecy and tongues and interpretation next week. Let's concentrate on everyone practicing their gifts in meetings like this. Okay? And that's what we want to do. We want to have an environment where people can say, I think I have it. I think I've got something. Okay, give it. Give it and then we'll see. You know? I think that's a lot of people don't move in the gifts of the Spirit, especially tongues, interpretation, and prophecy, because they're so afraid they're going to be judged. Well, you are going to be judged. 
<laughs> well, let's just get that over with. You, yes, every, every manifestation of the Holy Spirit is going to be judged by our spirits because we don't want the fake. We want the real. But that's not mean, that doesn't mean that we're judging you wrongly, mm. right? Yeah. It's different. It's like, I'm not, I don't want a critical spirit. I want to teach you. Right. I want to teach you that that's God and that's not God. So that you'll know for yourself eventually that's God. And then you'll hear other people do things and you'll say, that was God. Or, ooh, what did you think about that? I don't think that was God. And that's the best way of learning is bouncing it off of the people that you know are in the know. That is the best way. Brian taught me how to, in, how to judge prophecy and tongues and interpretation because I knew nothing. And he taught me into the point where I then could say, yeah, I, I got, that was not right. You know, but I had him to bounce it off of. And we still bounce things off of each other, right? Sadly, to some degree, you need to be in some meetings that are out of order and people are giving wrong words. It happens. To start discerning the difference. Yeah, and, and that's it. And all you ever hear is everything when it's right, you don't pick up on the counterfeit. Sometimes. Um, the only learning curve is dealing with your own fear and yielding. That is really all that you have to deal with in yourself is fear of stepping out and fear of yielding and trusting God to move through you. That's, that's really the only hindrances to the gifts. That was one of the things that Kenneth Hagin used to say. Um, people would ask him, how do I operate in the, in the gifts? And he said that the easiest way to operate into the gifts is yieldedness. Yieldedness, that's it. You just say, God, use me, and then yield him. Yield yourself to him to, to be used. So next week we'll talk about simple prophecy versus prophets and guidelines to prophecy. So let's, let's just spend some time just in worship, uh, just not singing, just worshiping him in the presence um, of, of the Lord. And let's each one of you ask the Holy Spirit for this gift and any other gift he wants to give you. Just it, it, tell him, I'm, I'm yielding myself to you, and I know this is possible for those that believe, and I'm going to choose to believe you. And this is, what, this is what I'd like to see in my life, an increase of the gifts of the Spirit in whichever way you will. But Lord, I want to be able to understand my prayer language. I want to interpret it so that I can know what you're saying, the mysteries of God, strategies, things to come. I want to know all that. You just tell him. You know, and he is faithful and just, right? He said to ask. He said to ask. Mm -hmm.